टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फैमिली द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इन पी गिस्बर्ट्स बुक इज फैमिली now so far what we have discussed and we we will apply what we have learned so far to study of concrete phenomena in society family state education social stratification etc now what we have learned so far is what is the subject matter of sociology what is sociology who are the founding fathers of sociology what have they done and what kind of approaches have been used in the discipline for example there are some sociologists who use naturalistic or positivistic method they have a tendency to use physical science model or develop their sociological theories on the pattern of models of physics or other natural sciences there are some sociologists who develop their models based on mathematical and statistical equations there are some sociologists who do more of field work and follow anthropological tradition and there are some who use philosophical or historical or theoretical models to develop their arguments in favor of some idea or against some idea toward the end of the last lecture i said that broadly speaking you can think of three perspectives in sociology a managerial perspective which will be employed by state or government in policy making in developing various schemes and programs for the upliftment of uh, people vulnerable sections of society poor rural downtrodden and there is another perspective which is the perspective of experts or social scientists or sociologists the approach of social scientists or experts is going to be different from the expert of uh, a state or those associated those sociologists which are associated with state and there can be another sociology you can think of another sociology or another perspective which studies social phenomena from the perspective of people so i wrote on the board at the end of the last lecture that there is are three major perspectives a perspective of a state or corporate world or managers another perspective of sociologists or experts these sociologists and experts are to be found in university departments some of them are freelancers intellectuals and third is the perspective of people so to understand the perspective of people we have to do field work we have to live with them understand their problems from their own angles these are three perspectives now what we have learned so far we will apply to study of concrete phenomena like family then we will study state education social stratification or the issue of equality or inequality between people toward the end we will examine some issues connected with social change planning we can revisit theories and methods so now when we talk of family uh, one among all the concepts that we discussed so far one was the concept of group and another was the concept of institution group is an aggregate of individuals characterized by interaction identity unity purpose and a structure 
institutions are norms customs traditions folk ways mores taboos customary laws enacted laws fashion fad craze interwoven or built around certain values of society or certain key activities like family economic activities so accordingly we talk of family institution economic institution political institutions and so on now looked at from that perspective family is both family is a group and family is also an institution some sociologists use the term family and marriage interchangeably but actually there is a difference although some sociologists would not make much difference between family and marriage and they will use these two terms interchangeably but there is a difference when we look at family as a group then we are referring to family as a group it is a family family is a group in the sense go back to the definition of group it is an aggregate of people family consists of two or more persons it is an aggregate family has interaction members of a family interact among themselves and what is interaction it's not simply acting in the context of family or behaving but acting keeping in view others expectations from us and also with a full consciousness of how will other members of family or other members of the group react or respond to the way i behave in so there is a social interaction there is an aggregate there is interaction there is identity we strongly identify with our family family is one group with which perhaps we identify most intimately more intensely more emotionally more spiritually than with any other group family using the concept of kuli and that has the greatest influence on our personality thoughts personality it's a primary group using uh kuli's definition it's primary group. marriage is an institution so when i write family i am referring to group when i write marriage i am referring to institution marriage is the beginning of formation of a family when two adults get married there is a beginning of a new family now why should we why should we sociologists be interested in studying family for several reasons one that family is one of the most important primary groups that shapes our personality theoretical interest in family may also arise from the fact that sociologists want to study relationship between different facts of society social facts or different patterns of society and therefore they would be interested in studying what are the variations in family if social facts belong to society and one social fact is to be explained in relationship with other social facts it is obvious that the nature of family as a social fact will vary from one society to another and sociologists would be theoretically interested in uh what is the nature of family 
in different societies, in different cultures. What are the major characteristics of family? And how those characteristics of family are shaped by the larger socio-economic, political, cultural milieu. We do not expect if sociological proposition of positivism is correct, that one social fact is to be explained in, in terms of other social facts, then we should not find the same type of family in all societies. Although the term family may be used in different languages and in different societies, but if family as a social fact is determined by other facts of society, then obviously in different societies and in different cultures where social organization is different, level of economic development is different, political system is different, religions are different, value systems are different, we should not expect the same characteristics of family to prevail. So family is a social fact, a part of society and in dynamic terms a social phenomenon and we should study it. Some sociologists also study family because they find that many ills of society or many things which are in simple language unwanted, which we do not want to see them to exist, are because of family. Inefficiency, bribe, corruption, many forms of deviance, many bad things of society, inequality, social stratification, authoritarian rules or discrimination on the basis of gender, they are due to existence of family. And then what happens to family may also affect the level of happiness or the quality of life. Some people think that when family is strong, then people are more happy, the quality of life is much better. And when family is breaking down, when the divorce rate is rising, or there is an increased incidence of separation, widowhood, divorce, desertion, the quality of life suffers. Divorce is always a very painful process. And if there is wood, widowhood, how to society has to find ways of dealing with widowhood. Dr. Ambedkar in his anthropological work on annihilation of caste attempted to relate the issue of widowhood with the caste and inequality. Maybe sometime when I am talking about caste, I will shed more light on this issue. So family is important. Now sociologists face a problem that if sociologists are going to study something whose features will vary from society to society, then how do we study it for making any study comparative, longitudinal, for connecting something to other aspects of society? You need a working definition at least. That definition may not apply to all societies. And we will see what kind of problems arise when we try to define a family. But at least for the purpose of communication, for beginning a discourse on something, we need an operational definition. If family is completely determined by other facts of society and is so variable, so different from society to society, that we can't even define it what family is then we can't talk about family. That problem will arise 
in studying any institution of society, any group of society. So we have to have a working definition. We may not be happy with that definition, but we have to have a definition. In one book, uh, I got a definition of family. I thought that I will share that with you first, so that uh, we can start talking about forms of family. We know what, what we have in, uh, what are we talking about? Some working definition of family. And there was a social anthropologist. There is very little distinction between sociologists and anthropologists in certain domain. There was a, soci a sociologist come anthropologist, George Peter Murdoch. Sometime in 1940s, he wrote a book on family. And after making a study of nearly 250 societies, rich and poor, tribals and civilizations, different parts of the world, Asia, Africa, America, Europe. After making a study of 250 societies, he said that something like this is found in all societies. And he said that this can be a working definition of family. All the uh, features of family as seen from this definition may not apply to all societies. But to study society, to study differences in family between different societies, to study changes in family system, we can define family like this. According to George Peter Murdoch, the family is a social group. Let us see what are the important aspects of this definition. Family is a social group. Means individuals alone cannot comprise a family. It's a group. It's not individual. Family is not individual. Family is a group. Size of the group may be small or big, but it's a group. Characterized by, what are the characteristics of this group? There are so many groups. Specific characteristics of family as a group are common residence. That all the members of family live at one place. Now right from here you can see the difficulties in defining family. You are living in IIT Kanpur and your parents are living in Tamil Nadu. There is no common residence today, but still you say that you belong to this family. So maybe some allowance will have to be made to temporary separation or maybe it is not uh, so much uh, the physical aspect of living together, but mental aspect. You feel that you belong to this family. That feeling part is more important than living. Today, Due to pressure of job, many husbands and wives live in different cities and still they feel that they are part of the same family. Anyway, for George Peter Murdoch, one common feature of family or at least uh, he would say in majority of families, not in all families but in most families, one characteristic of the group called family is that there is a common residence. For all the members of the family, there is a common residence. Economic cooperation. There is also some kind of economic cooperation between members of family. What kind of cooperation? That depends. Again, there are variations. In economic cooperation, there will be variation. It is uh, a family in which one person is earning or a family in which 
both husband and wife are earning or a family in which three or more persons are earning whether they maintain separate accounts whether they buy immobile proper land or house uh, in the name names of all the persons or in the name of so called head of the family head of the group but there is some kind of economic cooperation and family as a whole therefore acts as a unit in taking decisions regarding production and consumption you buy a new tv that tv belongs to whole family you buy a new car a new refrigerator these things belong to the whole family there is economic cooperation even when people are living at different places a farmer is cultivating his land or his father's land in the village and farmer's brother is working in mumbai the person who is working in mumbai may send remittances to provide for agricultural inputs to buy fertilizer water seeds herbicides pesticides and when the produce comes according to their shared understanding they can share the agriculture produce among themselves so there is a, a cooperation economic cooperation joint property joint property or economic cooperation is another characteristic of family then reproduction in most societies the feature of reproduction producing babies is associated with family family and reproduction cannot be separated only in some uh, rare cases reproduction takes place outside family but then even when reproduction takes place outside family reproduction itself can lead to formation of a family so one day i was giving you the example of some working women from germany who are unmarried and who have kids they did not have a family they were living alone and then they had kids but now after having kids they have a family it becomes a group these women mothers and their children constitute a family now so reproduction is closely associated with family it includes normally not always this is a working definition it includes adults of both sexes adults of one sex alone would not constitute a family otherwise your hostel is also a family many features of family are found in hostel hostel is a group a social group common residence economic cooperation collection of fees uh, mass establishment charges from all the students then there is hcc under super, supervision of wardens there is economic cooperation for the whole group of students on behalf of students hcc takes decision regarding uh, menu on these these days what things will be made where to buy different inputs wheat rice vegetables coal and how to calculate mass will if some new workers are to be appointed economic cooperation but what it lacks why we can't call hostel a family that there is no reproduction children are not born in hostels children are not born then uh, hostels do not have adults of both sexes we have either boys hostel or girls hostel if we have a hostel in which both boys and girls live together then that is closer to family then you will have a social group you will have common residence you will have economic cooperation 
and you will have adults of both sexes. There may still be no reproduction, only adults of both sexes. At least two of whom, another characteristic of family, at least two of whom maintain a socially approved sexual relationship. In most societies, families have sexual relationship, families permit sexual relationship, family is the approved form of or legitimate form of sexual unions. Sexual unions can be established even otherwise, but in family there is an approval of having sexual relationship. Sex takes place outside family also. Some people in all countries have been known for going to say prostitutes or sex workers. But the client of sex worker and sex worker do not constitute a family because that sexual relationship is not approved by society. Sexual relationship in family is socially approved. And apart from these two adults of different sexes, there is one or more children, one or more children. Size of or number of children may vary from country to country. So, in uh, some societies, in some tribes, uh, like in the, uh, there, has, there has been a study of one Hattrite tribe in United States in the last century, in which every number of children was found to be more than 11. And there are countries today like Austria, where average number of children is only 1.2. So from 1.2 on the lower side to 11 on the higher side, the number of children may vary. But in family, you find children, one or more. Own, the children may be own, or they may be adopted. Actually, for society, it's the uh, social relationship of fatherhood that is more important. Society is not so much bothered about biology. There must be social fatherhood and therefore own or adopted. And the children belong to sexually cohabiting adults. This is what family means. But so, uh, let me repeat, the family is a social group characterized by common residence, economic cooperation and reproduction. It includes adults of both sexes, at least two of whom maintain a socially approved sexual relationship and one or more children own or adopted of the sexually cohabiting adults. This is George Peter Murdoch's definition and you can very well say that this is the example of a nuclear family. Some form of nuclear family is found in all societies, but yes there are variations. Variations with respect to all the features mentioned here except that family is a social group. Family is different from individuals, except that uh, you find that with respect to all the features of family mentioned here, there are differences. So now what I will do, I will uh, first show you the different form that family and marriage take in different societies. What are the departures from this definition? And then in the next lecture, we will come to theories of family or perspectives on family. How do different sociologists have looked at the issue of family? What is functional theory? What is Marxist theory? What is critical theory? 
how do interactionists or symbolic interactionists look at family and related issues. First, a kind of typology. We have to have some typology. This typology will also help you in understanding what are the different forms that family takes in different settings. Now, the standard classification of family, uh, first of all, we make a difference between nuclear and extended family. The definition of family given by George Peter Murdoch is an example of nuclear family. Essentially, it means a group comprising of husband, wife and children, their own children, own or adopted. This is the nuclear group. But all families are not nuclear. There are several families in which more than two, two or more than two married brothers or married persons in general are living together. And economic cooperation, reproduction, this. There may be families in which uh, an old couple is living with married sons or married daughters and they have their own children. These are extended families. Nuclear fam this is the nucleus of family, but family may be extended and this extension of family may be horizontal or vertical. Family may be horizontally extended or family may be vertically extended. When two or ma more married brothers are living with their spouses and children, then we are referring to horizontally extended family because they belong to the same generation. Because married brothers are belong to the or sometimes married brothers and married sisters may be living together. Instances of this type of family are rare, but married brothers are found to be living together till their property gets divided or they develop some conflict or their wives want to live separately. Uh, this, uh, in rural society, we had uh, a horizontally extended family for a long time. Two or more married brothers or two or more married sisters living together. That is extension, horizontal extension. Vertical extension will mean that uh, a married couple with children is living with uh, parents of the husband or parents of the wife. That is vertically, two generations or three generations. So married, an old married couple, one generation, their children married their uh, married son, wife and their children. Children belong to the third generation. Three generations are living together. That is vertically extended family. Now, before I mention other categories or other types of family, you see, sociologists are interested in these issues because they would like to know that if family exists in several forms, as a nuclear family, as a joint family or extended family, and in extended family it can be horizontally extended family or vertically extended family, what sociological or what social forces determine exactly the nature of family? In what circumstances you find that family is extended and in what circumstances family is nuclear. I think most of you, if you look around, would say that family in agricultural society was extended family. In agricultural setting, in rural areas, in villages, family was extended. And sometimes it was highly extended. 
married couples or at least one of them one has died husband has died or wife has died living with several married sons and their wives and children and sometime uh three generations of two or more married brothers may be living together one day i was telling you that even today in 2012 when in urban areas the dominant form of family is nuclear among certain business communities marwadis it's not rare to find a family uh with membership of 20 or more i myself know of several cases of such families in kanpur in bareilly several places in rajasthan in calcutta among marwadis businessmen all of them 20 25 30 35 40 persons live together each from the same kitchen and they take it to be a matter of pride that they are still together that they have not divided their parents property and they are living together and there is very close cooperation economic social emotional uh, religious spiritual all worshiping deepavali holi at the same time together there is a feeling of togetherness and they also feel that from this togetherness comes their social strength so there are variations under different circumstances you will have different type of families another uh, category or uh, another feature of family that family may be monogamous monogamy or polygamy or polyandry this is more with respect to marriage monogamy means one male is married to one female most of the families in most countries are monogamous one male one female you know? adults of both sexes one male one female when one man gets married to one woman it is monogamy men or women may be changed in the course of life that's a different thing like in united states divorce is so common that a man or a woman may live with 7 8 9 10 ages in lifetime the number of spouses in lifetime for an average american man or woman may be quite large but at a given point of time they live in monogamous marriage and they are expected to be as much faithful devoted loving of the other person as in those monogamous marriages where they don't even think of ever going for divorce or separation that is monogamy one man one man one woman in polygamy this is a marriage between one man and several women polygamy poly means multiple mono means one one marriage one marriage means one man one woman polygamy means one man married to two or more women at the same time the reverse of this is also true one woman polyandry again multiple multiple marriages means one woman is married to several men at the same time now since all of you come from a family based on monogamous marriage you may not believe that such things may exist but they exist P. Gisbert's book, or Harold Lambert's book, or Giddens' book, or other sociology books, give you examples of other forms of marriages from different parts of the world. 
Eskimo examples of Eskimos is frequently given. Primitive tribes from Australia is frequently given. Let me give you uh, one or two examples from your own country. Now, in your own country, near Dehradun, in John Sar Bauer, it's a tribe in John Sar Bauer, and Gisbert says that there is a whole belt going up to Hindu Kush, extending to Pakistan. In this whole belt, but certainly anthropological works have shown that certainly in John Sar Bauer, they have a polyandrous form of family in which one woman gets married to several men. Not only this, that there is polyandry, if a man visitor comes to their house, they often welcome the guest by offering their wives. And it is not considered to be anything bad. It's socially approved. Exchange of wives, offering wives to guests for entertainment, one wife, several husbands. John Sar Bauer has this kind of arrangement, but arrangement is changing. For a long time in John Sarbauer, such kind of arrangement existed. In Nilgiri, polygamous marriage is found to exist. The most interesting case is of Tali right marriage, which prevailed. Right is a sociological term for certain patterns of activities on certain occasions. Tali right. Tali is more important than right. Means, uh, under the arrangement of Tali, Tali was one arrangement. Among Nair families in Kerala, what is Tali marriage? Tali marriage is actually much more interesting than this polyandry or polygamy. In Tali marriage, before a woman reaches puberty, before the menstruation cycle starts, in India we have a tradition of marrying our girls before puberty. So before puberty, a girl is married to a man of the same community, a Nair man and he becomes her husband. But going by George Murdoch's consideration, common residence, economic cooperation, sexual relationship, there is nothing of this kind. A, a girl before puberty is married to a man of the same community. According to Tali Wright, so the man offers her a tali, a necklace kind, and the woman gets married. This girl, even when she becomes mature and sexually active, does not have sexual relationship with her husband, this tali husband. Tali husband is not supposed to cooperate economically, there is no economic relationship. And the tali husband and the woman do not even live together. Because the woman continues to live with her uh, mother, father, brother, sister, mother. It's a mother-centered family. The woman continues to live with her mother. This Nair woman under Tali right, after marriage also continues to live with her mother, sisters, other married sisters and their children. There is only one obligation on the part of this Tali woman that when her Tali husband will die, then she will, she is supposed to mourn the death of her husband. That's, that's the only expectation from a wife. 
the only expectation from tali wife is that later on sometime after 10 years 20 years 50 years when her husband will die she is supposed to cry then what about sex and reproduction regarding sex and reproduction all the members of the community means all adult nayars are her husband nayar was a warrior community and quite often the nayar men nayar adults were away from home when they are at home then in the night time they can approach any woman belonging to their community or slightly lower community in caste any woman they will go after dinner spend night with the woman and before the day begins they will come out in day time there is no mixing no interaction no relationship and that way all the nair men of the village from sexual point of view were husband of the tali woman in our own country there are very interesting india is so diverse khasi family up family tamil family kerala family karnataka family with respect to structure size with respect to institution of marriage there are very significant differences so here is one example one example a departure from this definition is tribal family of jansar bawar near dehradun another example is talib right marriage of nair women then what about economic aspects and so sex is taken care of any nair man present on on a night in the village can visit any nair woman under tali right what about children and what about economic aspects in economic aspects when the nair man after having sexual intercourse with the nair woman in night leaves she must leave before the day begins she can put some money or some gifts or some ornaments or something golden or some clothes below the pillow of the woman and that becomes the economic exchange you call it gift or whatever you call it. what about children when children are born then any nair man who declared that he will bear the expenses of certain rights done at the time of birth say giving some clothes or ornaments or some money to midwife or dai to barber that that person is supposed to be or is declared to be the father of the child so the relationship between child and father is not biological it's social any nair man on that day present in the village can uh, bear the expenses of child birth rights associated with child birth and is declared to be the father of the child the woman and the children continue to live with mother or other married sisters this is marriage under tali right in nair community there are very interesting variations you know uh, one uh, one thing i found interesting when i was reading about tali right marriage that society is present even there for example how is society present there is no restriction on the number of women with whom a man can sleep no rest for men there is no restriction so a man virtually all the nair women of the village are his wife but for women there is a restriction not more than 10 gender difference i was not expecting any gender difference in such kind of marriage system but even there there are restrictions women cannot take more than 10 husband but husbands can take any number of wives another interesting example 
that Haralambas gives in his sociology themes and perspectives that in New Guinea in the tribe Banaro hmm, a woman is not supposed to have sexual relationship with her husband unless she has born a child from husband's father's friend. First she will have relationship with husband's father's friend, produce a baby and then only she can live with husband. Quite variations that uh, if you look at age of marriage then in our country at the time of marriage girls are four to five years older than boys. In the past the gap was much, the gap was eight to ten years and there are again interesting variations there. I was doing some field work in uh, Jabua district of Madhya Pradesh in tribal areas and to my surprise I found that at the time of marriage they look at the age of girl but not at the age of boy. So when they think that now girls are of marriage village say 13, 14 or it may be sometime 12. So in that range 12 to 15 when they think that now girls are marriageable they arrange for their daughter's marriage. The boy at that time maybe 5 years, 6 years, 7 years. And commonly in all the tribal communities there one day I was mentioning that there are three tribal communities there, Bhil, Bilelas, Patelias. Patelias are more advanced and they think they are Kshatriyas. Bilelas are least advanced. Now if you closely examine their economic condition, migration, history, values, beliefs, to them it makes sense. Because for family, girl is more important than boy. So, at that, uh, girl can work, she can migrate, go to Surat, work as a laborer in construction industry or in diamond industry. Girl is more important for family than boys. So, for them, they can, they have no problem absolutely if girl is of 18 and boy is 7 years. In another study, one of my PhD students he studied the Bondo tribe of Odisha. A small segment of Bondos is still living in primitive condition. They don't wear clothes, they remain naked. In the hilly region, they are called upper Bondos. The upper Bondos still live in that primitive stage. And in Bondos also, uh, Sexual relationships are more common between a daughter-in-law and father-in-law, not between woman and husband, at least for initially for several years. My student was shocked when uh, she, in one case, early in the field work, she met a girl, mature enough, and she asked, how many children do you have? And she said, she doesn't have a child. Then she asked, why don't you have a child? And the answer was that because her father-in-law does not keep well, so she does not have a child. Among upper bondos then, the thing is that sexual relationships resulting in reproduction are maintained more or initially at least between a woman and her father-in-law, not between woman and her husband. So there are, now you see there are various. Society is about a study of variations in social phenomena. And family, like any other institution, like any other group, has variations. We will continue this discussion in the next class and look at various perspectives on family. <laughs>